Can anyone stop this Boston Celtics team? I mean, seriously, this is the best team in basketball. They were last year, and it wasn't particularly close, and they added Baylor Shireman through the draft, Lonnie Walker, uh, well, basically on a training camp deal, and Brad Stevens has just been cooking the entire offseason. He's been cooking, and nobody has been able to replicate what he has done here in Boston. He brings in Lonnie Walker. We talked about it in the last video, but we'll talk about it again in this video. Lonnie Walker is going to be a good addition for them. Coming off of that bench, he gives them a microwave score, something they really didn't have off the bench. They had Pritchard who's a good backup point guard, and they had Hauser, who was a good shooter. Now they have Shireman, who's also a good shooter, but they now have a microwave score, a guy who can go and get his own bucket, who averaged about 10 points a game, 2.3 rebounds last year on 39% shooting from three on about five attempts a game. That's very good. 42% from the field, you know, that can be addressed, that can be worked on. Maybe shot selection can be a little bit better, but he's also a catch-and-shoot guy, as you can see here. And per 36 minutes last year, he averaged about 21 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and 2.6 assists. Now, I know there was a reason he wasn't playing 36 minutes a game but still Lonnie Walker is going to be a great addition to this Celtics team he will fit in perfectly and he's a guy off the bench that can facilitate in this pick and roll and can score from three levels on the court and he will really help this Celtics team out a lot in the long run especially um, in some of those back-to-backs where like Tatum or Brown is resting you got Lonnie Walker now to come off the bench and give you an added boost. Now, Porzingis, who we haven't really talked about a lot on this channel this summer, but we need to focus on him because he is such a huge piece to this Celtics team coming off a year where he averaged 27, two and two. He, of course, is gonna be out until Christmas. He shot 52% from the field last year, 38% from three on five attempts. So this is gonna be a big loss and it's gonna be interesting to see how the Celtics replace him because yes, they bring in Shireman. Um, Lonnie Walker really is not gonna be playing any minutes of the four. Sam Hauser, I guess, could. Maybe we see a little bit of the other rookie, Anton Watson, but Christoph Porzingis has such a unique skill set with his ability to really score from wherever um, at seven foot three. He can also protect the rim. He averaged two blocks per game in just 29 minutes. That is very good. That, that doesn't happen um, a lot in the NBA. Uh, and if he can just stay healthy, which has been the issue with him his whole career, but if he can just stay healthy, he will be very, very good next year. Now, they still have the best wing duo in the NBA. It's not particularly close. And Tatum's coming in with a little bit of extra motivation. He got very little play in time for Team USA. He pretty much got made fun of by the entire country, but he's coming off of a year where he averaged 27 points, eight boards, five assists, one steal, and won an NBA championship. I don't know why he's being so disrespected, so hated. I mean, well, I got a kind of an idea, but it needs to stop because he is one of the best two-way wings in the league and may cement himself as a top three player in the NBA next year. Uh, he just needs a couple of big playoff performances. That's really all that's missing. He was all NBA first team last year. I think he's going to have a big time year. And then Jalen Brown's another guy that was very disrespected. The finals MVP, yet he does not get selected to play for Team USA. They picked three of his teammates instead of him, two of which were, you know, obviously inferior to Jalen Brown. Now, Drew Holiday, that's the perfect pick. Derek White, they're both all-star role players, which makes this Boston Celtics team so good, and that's what we're going to talk about. But still, Brown averaged 23 points, six assists, or six rebounds, excuse me, about four assists. Could have played him over like Tyrese Halliburton. Um, instead, no, they go with a different guy. He shot 50% from the field as well. Now let's take a look at the rookie, um, Baylor Shireman, who they picked up 30th overall in the draft this year coming off the season at Creighton where he put up 18 and a half points per game nine rebounds four assists and one steal per game the lefty has a very smooth jump shot and it's very pretty to watch 45 percent shooting from the field 38 percent from three on 8.3 attempts per game last year which would have put him 12th in the NBA in three pointers made if you adjusted it to an 82 game sample size um, then you have of course the bench the rest of the bench like with Al Horford who probably will be starting with Porzingis out but this was an elite bench revamp by Brad Stevens shout out to him you also have Anton Watson who wasn't even mentioned Jordan Walsh the rookie from last year uh, but yeah with that being said if you've made it this far into the video without hitting that subscribe button or that like button I mean what are we doing go ahead and go do that right now we're looking for about 200 likes on today's video and with that being and said let's go ahead and get back to the video looking at the elite role players that they have starting with Drew Holiday who I think is the best role player in the NBA and if it's not Drew Holiday then it's Derek White. Drew Holiday averaged 12.8 points per game 5.1 rebounds 4.8 assists last year as well as a steal and a block per game 
dude is just on a different level because he also shot 43% from three um, on five attempts and 48% from the field overall. I'm a huge Drew Holiday fan. He brings a different level of defense as well as 43% shooting from the three ball. I mean, just watch these clips right here. First, he's guarding Julius Randle. Then he's guarding Jalen Brunson just over and over straight in a phone booth. Um, great contest right there. <laughs> That's a brick. Uh, and then here he is getting up top with Jaime Hawkins. He can get up too. That's great defense. Drew Holiday, he's one of my favorite players in the NBA because he's such a good role player. You can put him in any situation and he will thrive. A lot like Derek White. And having these two guys on the same team around Porzingis, Tatum, and Brown is pretty much unfair. Um, but this is what the NBA is dealing with next year when it comes to trying to win a championship. You have to beat these guys. 15.2 points per game, 5.2 rebounds, 4.2 assists for Derek White last year on 46% shooting from the field. 40% from three on seven attempts. I mean, this team is just ridiculous. I really don't see anybody beating them next year. They got four guys. They can all get to the rim that are walking paint touches. And then you add Lonnie Walker. He really makes it a fifth. Um, but four guys in that starting lineup makes it so, so tough to stop and defend. Um, now, Al Horford will be a starter next year. And that is because, of course, uh, Christoph Porzingis will be out until Christmas. So Horford at age 87 uh, inserted into the starting lineup, I think he will do a fine job. 8.6 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, 2.8 assists in 27 minutes a game last year. He's still got a lot left in the tank. Well, maybe not a lot. He's still got a little bit left in the tank. 51% from the field, 42% from three on four attempts last year. But he's going to be 38. We'll see how he plays, how he holds up. He looked, I mean, the signs of age were showing, but he still averaged like a block a game last year. So uh, shout out to Al Horford. Longevity. Love to see it. And then you also have Sam Hauser here, who just got a four-year, $45 million extension. One of the best catch-and-shoot guys in the entire NBA. He knows his role, and he plays it so well. Nine points per game, 3.5 rebounds, one assist in 22 minutes a game. Um, good cutter as well. Just great piece of the offense here. 45% shooting from the field, 42% from three on five attempts a game. Um he runs with that second unit very well, and he played defense better than people thought he could in the NBA playoffs last year. And then the sorcery. We've talked about it, right? Brad Stevens, how he has constructed this lineup, because this is simply unfair. There are three players on this team that at some point or another started for Team USA this year. That is crazy work. And then Jalen Brown, the finals MVP, didn't even get selected. And you have a great bench revamp. You also have Jordan Walsh, Jaden Springer, um... Who am I missing? Luke Cornett, Anton Watson, other guys. And they have all of their first-round picks over the next three years, which due to the second apron restrictions will probably be number 30. Um, but still, they that doesn't change the fact that they have all their picks. They have a swap in 28, so they still get a pick. 29, it's in Portland. But, hey, I'll give up a first-round pick to have the man Drew Holiday on my team. But I, I think there's no question in my mind that this team runs it back this year. Um... A three-peat is very likely. Back-to-back uh, -back is even more likely, but they will have to get through the Thunder. I think the Thunder, we've talked about it, I think the Thunder are coming out of the West this year with their new additions, with Caruso, with Dort. We'll see how the wings for Boston match up. But, again, I mean, they also have Chet for Porzingis. It's going to be a fun matchup, but a lot of season before that even happens. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button. Leave me a comment down below and that subscribe button if you did enjoy at any point. And with all that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video.